Hi, I'm Kyle. I'm Melinda. And we help people grow great plants with our compost tea. Hey everybody, Kyle from Berkshire Worms. We're here next to our new bioreactor. I gotta give a big shout out to Diego Footer, first of all. He posted a video yesterday with a new bioreactor design that was quite a bit different from Dr. Johnson's bioreactor design that just blew my mind. I mean, I got so excited I did not finish his video. <laughs> I'll finish it later. But it was so simple, so easy. I just went out, built one, and it's halfway built now. I didn't get any video. It was raining and I was too excited to video it. So we're halfway through. I figure I'll show you along what we have so far. Our dimensions are different than his only because this is what I had laying around the farm. Um, I didn't want to go out and buy anything. So this is totally what we had laying around and it worked out really well. The big difference with his design is one large center air tube instead of the six smaller air tubes like in Dr. Johnson's design. Um, I love this idea because for one, it's so much easier to fill. I didn't have to dick around with holding the pipes in place. I didn't have to go build a jig. I just built one centerpiece of fencing around uh, some tomato cages and then one big piece of fence around. And all the compost is still within one foot of an airspace, like in Dr. Johnson's design, but I didn't have to build it on a pallet. I didn't have to cut holes out. I didn't have to do anything other than one center tube, one outer tube. Tubes. And it holds a lot more compost. Um, and I'm just, I was super psyched. So. Once again, big shout out to Diego Footer. Go check out his video, watch it till the end, like we're going to later. Um, but I'll show you what we have so far. So mine's different. This is five foot tall fencing, not six foot tall fencing. And I used landscape fabric. He was talking about using chicken wire, but this is what I had laying around. All of our chicken wire is and our other four wooden compost bins up there. So I didn't have any of that, but I had this landscape fabric. It's pretty flimsy. I can't imagine it would hold up more than a year. So this will probably be a, a one-time use for the landscape fabric. But here's the center air tube. So this is 18 inches around, or I'm sorry, in diameter. And this is five feet in diameter. So that way, you know, if you look around, there's no compost that isn't within one foot of an airspace. So we won't have to turn it. And we'll get that, that curing accomplished. We'll get a lot of fungal activity going. So this will become a fungally dominant compost. Whereas with windrow composting, we can't really accomplish that. And I'll show you what our starting material was. So I wasn't really planning on using raw inputs for the bioreactors. I see the bioreactors as more of like a finishing tool. I don't know a better way to put it. So this is an area we've been windrow composting in since last September and it's May now. So the piles have completely gone through their thermal phase and they're in the curing phase. So what I've been doing is turning this pile every two weeks or so just to make sure there's um, no anaerobic pockets building up that we're still getting some decomposition, but the bulk of the decomposition is finished. So this is really killer finished compost. This was from the root masses of our microgreen trays. 
food waste from a local juice bar. Um, brown material we've had from around the property and lots of biochar. So we have a ton of biochar that's been in this for what, nine months now. And my thought is we'll just put it in the bioreactor. I don't have to turn it and then it'll be ready for the fall time so we can top dress everything in the fall when it's really the best time to top dress with compost. So I'm gonna finish filling it up um, what you see in there are, let's see, 10, 10 wheelbarrow loads of that size, regular, good size wheelbarrow. So I'm going to keep filling and we'll check back in later. Well, that's what 15 wheelbarrow loads looks like. That was all the compost I had kind of set aside for this project. Not quite enough to fill it, which is interesting. That was like six months worth of our microgreen operations, root masses, and about the same time of collecting um, fruit and vegetable scraps from the juice bar in town. So I'm going to steal from another compost pile. This is one that is about four months older than that pile. So this one's pretty well finished itself. The reason why I'm using, I mean, this is pretty dope stuff. I mean, we could totally be using this now. But this was a pile that I never turned. I just, it was, we would pile our root masses in here at the end of every week, add food waste from the juice bar and repeat until we filled it up. I don't know, we would keep filling it up, it would break down, we'd keep filling it up, it would break down. We'd add biochar. There's still some biochar on top here. But I'm gonna to top off our reactor with this stuff. Um, just because I never really paid much attention to it and I never turned it, part of me feels like there was some anaerobic stuff going on in here, but so far I haven't found any. These were our hybrid reactors from last year. So it, it all gets really good airflow. So if there's any anaerobic areas, it's probably right in the center, but I figure if this goes in the bioreactor and can finish off aerobically, that would really make this stuff primo. Not that it's not already, but. So that's where we're at. We'll go back to the time lapse. Our bioreactor is full. I'm pretty whooped, but it feels great to have this much compost curing and I never have to turn it again. <laughs> That's the coolest part. At this point, you can cover your reactor with a tarp or more landscape fabric. What I'm gonna do is, since it's gonna be rainy for the next um, two days here, not hard rain, just kind of like soaking rain, I'm gonna let um, Mother Nature get this a little more moist for me. It's perfect right now, but it'll start to dry out quickly in the reactor. So we're gonna let Mother Nature soak it. 
Then I'm going to top this all off with leaves. This should compact down a little bit after the rain. And then I'll throw some landscape fabric on top. But thanks for watching. And reach out if you guys have any questions. Let us know what you think of this. Wanted to thank Diego Footer again for his design. I think it's too cool. And catch you guys later.